Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'll be sharing my perspective and five common misconceptions around Notion Formulas 2.0. Thank you all for the support. It's been really great. And I plan on continuing to make these videos weekly so that you all can still continuously learn Notion intuitively while I'm not here. In today's video, I will be sharing my observations and perspectives um, and misconceptions, most of all, around Notion Formulas 2.0 and about lined these five points below. So I'm going to just read them out. You can change a property using a formula. You can interact formulas with automations. The notion formula syntax is hard to use. It's hard to reuse and store old formulas. There's too much to learn. I don't know where to start. Feel free to skip through the sort of misconceptions based on what you resonate with. But these are sort of the five takes that I've identified um, that are common occurrences within the Notion community that I've been a part of. So for the first one is you can change a property using a formula. That's something that I've heard throughout the last few weeks and months where people are thinking that you can use a formula to change another property within a Notion database. And the fact of the matter is you can't change another property. And that is because a formula property only pertains to itself as an output. So you can only create an output within your formula property that allows you to reference other properties, but it doesn't allow you to change that property. This is something that I don't see will be changing anytime soon. And I imagine that something like Notion Automations might have the ability to potentially change things based on a known output. It's not going to be a relational output like you would in a formula, but I think Notion Automations might be able to accomplish some of what you're looking for if you're looking to change a property when something happens. You can't change a property using a formula. Again, these are all misconceptions, these five points, and I will be explaining in each page sort of a concise summarized way in which I understand these misconceptions and how we can approach them. Number two, you can interact formulas with automations. I think that's something that we all sort of want, but notice how I added the word yet. I think this is something that could happen in the new future, but we currently cannot interact formulas with automations. I think the way to think about it is you can only automate your outputs in a formula property and only in that property, sort of building on the last point of thinking that people are able to change another property using a Notion Formula 2.0 property. I think just about two months ago, the syntax for Notion formulas was wildly different. Some people preferred a different style of coding or writing formula. And so with this new update, there's even bigger, more profound changes that folks are having to learn. I think the sort of misconception that, I, that gets thrown around is Notion formula syntax is hard to use. I think on the surface, it might seem that way, but the deeper you actually dig in, Notion has updated a lot of its formula functions to sort of responsively suggest different formula functions while you're writing it. And then also introduce some other functions in these other misconceptions that I think actually make the new formula 2.0 syntax easier to use. Dot notation has changed everything. I think I've said this and repeated this across other videos, but it has simplified the way that you can add and layer in functions seamlessly, especially with the ability to add new variables now. The dot notation is now just a superior way of um, taking advantage of the brand new Notion formula syntax. Again, there's formatting, help text errors, and syntax suggestions that also make it easier to use. And I'll also link this page. This page is going to be really helpful. It tells you all of the sort of formula function texts. And obviously there's a lot to consume. And I regularly reference this as well, because I think it's incredibly valuable when you can search with control F and look for maybe a keyword that pertains to a property you're looking to manipulate or a formula function you're hoping to create. As you can imagine, I've only tapped the tip of the iceberg with a lot of these videos I've created. I've tried to use and expand the way that we can build on these formula functions. But again, I'm still learning. And I think most people who take Notion seriously are always still learning what you can do with Notion Formulas 2.0, because I think there's a never ending possibility with all of these new functions. They give you an example and it tells you what you're trying to do. That's pretty neat. Fourth misconception that I see is it's hard to reuse and store old formulas. In previous cases, that was definitely the case. But again, with this Notion Formulas 2.0, it's very different now. You can now use the code block to store old formulas. You can go 
slash code, add a code snippet. And then we can also search for Notion formula and we can create that code block there. It can be as easy as just copy and pasting a formula from another video and then pasting it. And we have this clean way of seeing, organizing and breaking down formulas, right? It's neatly color coded. Even if we do JavaScript that adopts these color schemas. As you can imagine, you can have a page with just these code blocks to have all of your potential formulas in one place. And not to mention, you can add comments to any Notion formula so that you can reference your comments when revisiting old formulas. If you're trying to understand what's going on here, we can also do the asterisk styling. And that was a really easy comment that I could add within the formula copy paste which won't affect the outcome or the output and will not lead to any errors because we've used the syntax of asterisk open and close slashes. I've shared this in other videos, but this is a big game changer so that you don't necessarily have to remember how to do everything. Maybe something you've created a few months ago, you can reuse today with a current client so that maybe you only need to pick apart certain aspects of the formula and combine them with other things to meet your specific needs. That's a huge one. I think if Notion Formulas 2.0 is relatively new to you, these are big hitters. The last one I think is very subjective. Obviously I have a strong bias because I create these tutorials and videos to show you how to use some of these Notion formulas and how to use Notion overall. There's too much to learn and I don't know where to start. I think it's a really valid take at first glance with Notion Formulas 2.0 and I hope just from watching this video, you have a little more confidence and you have a better understanding of how you might be able to start so that you don't overwhelm yourself. And I think this is something I'll share with everybody is you can learn incrementally one step at a time. You don't need to overwhelm yourself with seeing every single formula that you can possibly use at once. You know, that syntax page is very helpful, but maybe you don't need to scroll all the way down and see everything, right? Maybe you only need to use control F to find what you're looking for. And I think the best way to get started is ideally by starting by identifying one way you can use formulas for your personal dashboard or workspace and to go from there. If there's something you're using on a daily basis and you're like, man, I need to know how to sort by these related items and then filter based on these properties. I think both of those things are just two formula functions that you just have to understand and combine together to get what you're looking for. You don't need to know every single formula function to get that. And I think that is sort of the reason why my Notion Formulas 2.0 videos are relatively simple is so that you have the ability to maybe you combine several things from my videos to create what you're looking for. Everyone's needs are different. And so I'm just trying to add a little piece in your toolkit or your understanding of Notion so that perhaps you can sort of expand the way you think about Notion as well as maybe to step outside of your comfort and to sort of expand what you can do with your current setup. I think the beauty of Notion is customization. So I think you'd only be doing a favor to yourself by maybe starting to learn Notion formulas one step at a time. I think a lot of YouTube videos that are coming out today have a lot of layers of Notion formulas built in at once. And so I think my style of trying to isolate certain formula functions within an example and having the viewer sort of interpret their meaning from that is the goal with my channel. I think I'm at 610 subscribers as of today, and I really appreciate all the support over the last few months. I guess I'm at 613 subscribers as of now, but I think something that I want to just share with everybody is that only 16.3% of you are subscribed to my channel. If it's not too much to ask, I'd uh, greatly appreciate it if you could, you know, click on that like button, click on that subscribe button. It greatly helps my channel when you do. Thanks for watching this video if you made it this far, and I'll see you in the next one.